so far we've discussed that Chinese EVs simply do not make EVs of adequate range. We have, however, also seen that those that do come close are dramatically affected by handling and performance due to the additional weight from the batteries. We also see that none of them are yet profitable, and the ones that do have any range that might be sufficient to meet some market segments, well, they're going to cost at least $15,000 more than the equivalent Tesla in the US. All in all, it's not looking great for the Chinese EVs. I understand their strategy of using cheaper batteries and probably cheaper lots of things. The Chinese like to compete on price and those savings will be felt in the drive quality. Every EV reviewer agrees that Teslas are all a superior drive over the Chinese EVs, even those who are sponsored by the Chinese EVs. Also, in the US, Americans do like buying American and Tesla is as American as you can get. Although Biden might not agree, even Ford's Mach-E is made in Mexico. In the last video, we went through seeing how many of the models in China would actually be suitable for sale in the US, probably under 10% of them. And the Chinese are also selling mainly in China. So of those 10%, there'd be very few left for export anyway. And if they wanted to export them, then America is going to be the toughest market. What with it being Tesla's home turf and all the tax rebates. The Chinese EVs prices will be dramatically higher than Tesla's yet they do not have the brand or quality or any USP to justify that price point compared to say a brand like Mercedes. Oh, but what if the Chinese are so clever that they start buying up other established brands? I say start, well, they've already begun. As we know, the Chinese bought out MG. That's right, Nanjing Automobile bought out MG for about $100 million. Wow, MG, what a brand, right? Well, when was the last time you cared about an MG? Yes, it's an established classic brand that's been around for almost a century. It was also part of Rover 2, which went under a while back. Funnily enough, the MG brand is actually synonymous with sports cars, yet it has gone into an electric crossover, kind of like the Ford Mustang. Make no mistake, this is still just a Chinese EV with a non-Chinese badge to try and help establish some authenticity. It's not too bad a looking car, but we're at 190 miles EPA range and zero to 60 of 8.2 seconds, hardly much of a sports car anymore. Ironically, I believe that an affordable coupe is the biggest market that is being missed with electric now, but I guess they're too small to stuff in enough batteries to get any performance. The MG is just the same as the other Chinese EVs, just somewhat masked with an established brand. They bought the company cheap. This is not the future of the Chinese EVs to buy out legacy brands. There's a big difference between buying MG, which was likely on its last legs anyway, compared to the prestige of a brand like Mercedes. Some consumers are already paying more for Mercedes over a Tesla. That's brand value. Also, if the Chinese did purchase a brand like Mercedes, there's no way they could get away with 250 miles of range or so, and zero to 60 times in eight seconds. This is not the Mercedes customer or brand. Legacy brands are not for the Chinese. I've said before that if anyone would be buying out legacy brands, it's gonna be the Japanese and Koreans. Why? Because they're the ones with nickel-based batteries which is what is required for a serious car brand if they want range and performance. It would be a way for them to vertically integrate. Also, if these battery companies, LG, Panasonic, SKI, Samsung, etc., only bought out the electric vehicle side of the legacy business, then they may be able to avoid the car dealer network too and likely remove the unions. Then suddenly they're competing at $10,000 less cost per vehicle. Added to that a $7,500 reduction in a rebate and they might make it. These would be serious electric vehicle companies, vertically integrated with in-house batteries too. Some of them are also already getting into 4680 form factors, although we aren't entirely sure of the chemistry yet. If battery companies can make in-house nickel batteries for around 60 to 70 kilowatt hours and owning some legacy brands and adopt Tesla FSD and charger network, then that might be a sustainable EV company. All of these battery companies pretty much already have partnerships with Tesla already too meaning they likely won't be stubborn, obtuse, or too proud to not take up Tesla on their offer of FSD and superchargers, unlike the legacy autos who have yet to take Tesla up on such an amazing offer, or even establish that they exist. Oh, same with the Chinese. Right, how can any of the Chinese EVs compete in the US without using Tesla's supercharger network? Another major hurdle for them, along with FSD. Even NIO have decided to go the path of LiDAR, with built-in LiDAR in their cars. I think the legacy orders have too much of a struggle with their ICE business inevitably collapsing, leaving them with a ton of debt they cannot afford, let alone talking about borrowing tens of millions of dollars more. If LG bought Ford, then can you imagine how valuable that company would be?
Judging by the value that Rivian has achieved, it could hit a market cap of $200 billion or so, much more than Ford is worth today. Ford's legacy systems and profitable ice industry are costing the company a fortune. Of course, it makes it extra tough with the UAW. It's all holding them back. So yeah, if the Chinese did start exporting to the US in a big way, then they have their lack of infrastructure. Not only that, add to that the cars with their lack of range. Well, if you have less range on your car, then this needs to be compensated with more chargers everywhere. And okay, Biden is investing $7.5 billion into chargers, an outrageous number by the way. Besides, the majority of these chargers will be Teslas anyway, as Tesla can produce chargers faster than anyone else. We were told that Tesla will triple their charging network in the next two years. That's a really big deal. So perhaps BYD start off in California or somewhere. Perhaps there are some people who like them over a Tesla or they don't want to have to wait for a Tesla and there is sufficient charging, but then you can't go on any long journeys. But also what if something happens to your car? What about service centers? Now we hear service centers are a popular complaint about Tesla. We get mixed reviews. There are plenty of Tesla owners raving on about how good they are too. It's just that there aren't enough service centers yet, but Tesla is obviously doing their best on that front too. But how would BYD manage? Wouldn't that put off a lot of buyers? What about if you had to wait a month for a part to come from China? Of course, these EVs are going to be a lot more unreliable than Tesla's too. Even Ford and Audi's EVs don't come close to Tesla for reliability. EV service centers need serious economies of scale due to the fact they do not have the typical income streams of an ICE service center. Just to summarize, you would pay $15,000 more for a BYD over a Tesla, the range would be less, there would be fewer charges, the car is dangerously slow, especially for California highways, the car doesn't handle as well, the risk of breaking down may mean your car might be off the road for a month or so, it would only be limited to perhaps California and take a long time until they can expand out to other states. There are many successful companies that have done well only to expand to America and lose it all. It's a really tough market. These Chinese companies could only justify a small percentage of their cars in the US, making it tougher to hit economies of scale. Right, a tough market. Who would have even heard of these little companies? Sure, you and I have heard of BYD, but go and ask your neighbor. I bet they haven't heard of them. So how will they get sales? Well, they'll need to advertise too, which will only further add to their expense. Their expenses that are already exceeding revenue. In other words, more losses. Am I missing something here? There's plenty of credible people that think otherwise. If you think I have missed something, by all means, let me know in the comments. As always, I'm not simply trying to fit a narrative, but want to be objective. I use my own opinion and do not simply build on what other people in the industry are saying. Although I will take in what they're saying. I'm honestly not just trying to say how much better Tesla is and that the Chinese have no chance against Tesla. The first hand research I conducted, I present you all the numbers and everything to support it. If you think I'm being biased, then by all means, let me know, but don't leave the typical comment of, you would say that, look at the name of your channel. Tell me what I have missed. Look, in my opinion, all this is, is a competition. It's the classic communism versus capitalism contest again. First, it was rocket comparing competitions between USSR and USA. Who can be the first to the moon? It's the same here. Which country is the greenest, US or China? China is all show, they're not legitimate. If they were, they wouldn't be opening a new coal power plant every week. Biden's new bills are showing off that the US can beat them. Unfortunately, they're all using modern monetary theory to achieve this, something that can't work and it will blow up in their faces. I'm happy to go through MMT for any of you who want to know how it's basically just a last resort at the government's grabbing as much cash as they can before their currencies are totally debased, like every other fiat currency has in history. Hence why you should have some Bitcoin. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.